Hi, I'm Mike Stanton with Build America Mutual. I'm here with Tom Doe, the president and founder of Municipal Market Analytics. It's Climate here Week here in New York, and we're having a series of interviews on the BAM website discussing some of the issues surrounding climate risk in the muni market, and Tom is an expert on these questions uh, and has really had some uh, great insights, so we appreciate him taking the time to talk with us today. Good um, to be here with you, Mike. Thanks. So, Tom, let's let's start. How, this is not a new issue. It's been discussed in the market for uh, several years now. Is the market seeing progress in terms of the comprehensive relevant disclosure from issuers? We are starting to see more of these uh, climate disclosures in official statements. What kind of progress is being made? It's certainly in its nascent stage. And as you're absolutely correct, it's been about two years in the formation of issuers starting to spend more attention or give give more focus to it. Um, I just was on a call today with a group of issuers and this was at the forefront and task force are, are being formed in order to address the disclosure issue. So it's, uh, it's coming, it's gaining a lot of momentum and certainly the events that we've all seen read in the headlines the last two weeks have uh, helped to garner a lot of momentum in this space. So I think one of the challenges that issuers face uh, as I think about what to disclose here is the fact that science is still evolving. Do they know enough to be able to give uh, the market reasonable answers to some of the questions that people are asking? Well, this is where uh, the advances have really occurred in the last four years. And as you're well aware, um, uh, we work with a, our climate partners, a firm called Risk up here in Boston and who's been able to quantify a number of the different climate risks down to the QCIP level. And this is the first time this has been done, but uh, the, the, uh, the advancements of, of data analytics have been able to take, say, 100 different sources of data related to climate, to, to demographics, uh, to econ different economic factors, and then being able to uh, bring the uh, uh, data down to the granularity of a, the smallest of issuers is now going to empower issuers with the ability to articulate their climate risks and also what their uh, complementary plans are for adaptation strategies. So th this will be great, a, a tremendous boon of, of information to both investors and to the constituents, you know, the taxpayers in a community. So, and, and uh, risk isn't alone. There are other uh, companies are also adva doing advancing advancement work in those uh, in that area, as well as a number of academic institutions. So it's really an exciting time for this issue and for the municipal market to finally develop some awareness around it. Is that how you see the issue developing and moving forward, the issuers taking the data um, and then reinterpreting it for the market, or do you think that investors will end up uh, doing it themselves? I think the, I, I, mean, I think what's exciting about the issuers is that I think they're in a position to take, take a, uh, use the data in a positive way. Um, so I don't think it's enough just to create a negative screen to say someone, has, an issuer is at particular climate risk, whether it's an inland flood or whether it's coastal or whether it's a wildfire risk as we've seen in the West, uh, but is to identify, use the data to help in the, the essentially the urban planning or the, the planning process around how to sustain communities both um, in their current form, but also as you as there's the inevitable migration of your of the tax base away from an area, and how you plan to protect those uh, those people that remain behind, and so how do you plan infrastructure? Uh, social needs, all these types of, of factors that are important just to humanity. Um, I think that's where the issuers are in a particular, um, or a particular uh, uh, advantage, I would say, like to use the data in a constructive and positive way. Um, I think investors will use it also in, in that way to construct a more positive um, uh, portfolio or, you know, I say a green portfolio or co comply with their ESG mandates. But I'm more excited actually right now with the issuers are, are focusing in, on, the, uh, on the issue and are uh, uh, putting data together in order to do more uh, futuristic planning. And what's the time frame that, that we have to think about these risks on? As you said, you know, this has kind of emerged as an issue in the market from a discussion perspective just over the last two years. Um, we talk about migration, that feels like a very long-term issue. 
is that right? Is that the, the way to think of it, or is it is it coming sooner? I, I think the pandemic has has advanced this issue uh, a little bit faster than we would have anticipated. I think you're exactly right. I think the migration would have been something we would talk about 10 to 20 years from now. But now with, uh, you know, everyone learning how to work remotely and now taking steps to move out of areas where uh, there might not just be the, the uh the risk of a disease, but now you know, saying, well, if I have risk of future risk of, of, a, of a climate nature, that maybe I should move now. And so I think if we change our work habits as technology is continuing to advance at, at a really a warp speed, is that I think we may see this migration sooner than we had anticipated. So is the market a tool that can, does the market have tools that can help uh, encourage people to to be more aggressive here and i'm thinking in terms of pricing risk um you know obviously we've seen a lot of demand for munis over the last few years and, and credit spreads have gotten compressed is there an opportunity here for if investors think differently that that could start creating a, an economic driver to towards a, a different future yeah um i th i think that as as you well know mike you know, the, the supply demand drives the municipal market and to your point there's been so much demand for the tax exemption characteristic of municipal bonds that that has been the most immediate uh, driver of the marketplace and the dynamics whether it's credit spreads or just the absolute pricing so climate hasn't become a factor yet however i think again every time we go through the hurricane season and as you know we're running out of names Right, for for uh, how many storms we're going to have this season, and with the the breadth of the fires on the West Coast extending beyond California and up into the Northwest, the sensitivity has increased, and that is, um, I think, in I'd say in the next 12 to 18 months, we'll start to see this in, involved in pricing. A lot of issuers say that they don't see an economic benefit to selling labeled green bonds. So there, there's not uh, additional demand from investors in that sector. Um, the response has been, if there are more green bonds, we can start to establish that as kind of a standalone subsector in the market, and that's when we can start demonstrating uh, pricing uh, characteristics uh, of green bonds specifically. What do you think is next for that? Is, is that is additional volume part of the solution, or is the green bond market uh, going to be a, a niche more, for, uh, more about attracting investors and not necessarily about uh, differentiating pricing for issuers? I think there's going to be an evolution in, in the definition of green. And while there are certainly descriptions on an international basis and in, in definitions of what a green designation is, we, we know that, um, that I think that will evolve as the climate risk component becomes more of a, uh, a factor in a concern for investors. Uh, certainly today, Volkswagen had a very successful corporate offering with the green designation, um, raised $2 billion, easily investor demand for the green bonds in the taxable space was uh, considerable. I think perhaps the opportunity for municipals as the, uh, the great amount of taxable financing that's occurred in 2020, right? We've already eclipsed 2019's total, entire year's total, is that that may be the toehold for uh, where the green, uh, you have enough issues um, and enough breadth of investors who are sensitive to the green designation and are then focus again a little bit more of granularity on the climate aspect of it to um, uh, broaden say the pricing sensitivity and getting a nucleus to create indexes that then we can spread off and have an understanding of green versus non-green. I think the taxable issue is gonna be the, will be the, could be the key element to really promote the, the green designation in municipals. Certainly there's been uh, no shortage of taxable issuance this year. Right record amount. Thanks for your uh, time today, uh, Tom. This is uh, a lot to think about and obviously a lot of risks to, to watch out for in the muni market uh, as we move in the next few years. Uh, we will see you back next, uh, next year for Climate Week in person. <laughs> Mike, a pleasure to join you as always. Thanks.
BAM is helping its member cities, towns, and school districts build a sustainable future. BAM Green Star Bonds finance projects that protect and restore the environment. That means more renewable energy, efficient transportation in buildings, and clean water. Investors know BAM Green Star Bonds are financially secure and make critical infrastructure more affordable. We do this for the same reason you do, building America sustainably. BAM, the feeling is mutual.